freedom! I'm free! This guy's I'm free. insane! we got that comedic abomination in the last episode. I was praying, I was praying to the almighty unicorn that we would get some kind of respite. But here's to not hoping too much. Let's get into season one, episode six of Willow. Although it should be called Adventures of Jade and Kit and Elora. We start off the episode like any other over this really strange city that Looks like a video game cutscene, and there's Al. Almost forgot that this guy existed. He's left here, he can hear voices telling him to embrace his power and to go through that weird creepy door, but he refuses. He's like, nope, that's creepy, I'm not going there. I'm not into scary cities or spooky voices. I'm gonna head in the opposite direction. And even though his lips are cracked, he still looks like he just did his hair and makeup, he's gonna go across the, the, the freaking desert area. Meanwhile, we see what happened for the aftermath of the last episode. The trolls have Kit and Willow, and they are brought inside the dwarf, sorry, troll mines. They're put in cages. And Willow, of course, feels very useless because he doesn't have his wand or his staff. Kind of sad when you figure the show is called Willow and he's never become the sorcerer, the great sorcerer he always wanted to be. And I have a feeling he never will. This is where we meet some guy who claims his name is Mad Mardigan. It's Mr. Robot, i.e. Christian Slater, who is honestly the best thing about this episode. Then the trolls come in. I don't know what happened with the trolls, but what I was not expecting was for them to sound like this. Hi there. I am Lord Saris. Chief Administrator here at Skellen. <sighs> so these trolls go on saying, we know you're not from the Wildwood. When Watermelon Head asks, how do you figure? The trolls basically say, well, you just don't look like you're from there in so many words. Funny, even though the depiction of the trolls is, I don't really know how to feel about that. Still a lot more interesting than the other characters have been so far. Puny, weak, feeble, frail. Runty. Ider said, your clothes, which is stylish, yet practical. For the others make a plan to go in and break the others out. Mormon has more experience with this, but never told him exactly how we got in. The idea is the trolls want to torture her into telling them where Alora Dan is. And, God, her face is annoying. Sorry. <clears throat> that came out. I can't help but feel a tinge of joy every time something bad happens to Kit. She's the only character who I'm like, you know what? That's what your ass gets. This is what happens when you make one of your main characters who's supposed to be likable, you're supposed to be rooting for, very unlikable. You actually are rooting for something to happen to them. It's like the horror movies where everyone's perpetually stupid to the point where you wish for them to die. Mormon leads the others through traipsing through troll poo and does the old comedic, I'm gonna make sure that nobody is we're here right before falling through a wall. Graydon is actually becoming super annoying because he is simping and sucking up to Alora. Notice dude she liked you a lot more when you weren't doing all of that. When you were just nice but you were your own person. Now it's like your whole existence is trying to kiss up to this woman who now finds you absolutely deplorable. I bet if you ignored her and just went about your life she would actually focus on you a little bit more. They're sitting here and talking about their feelings while their friends are literally risking their lives behind them. Great, you're both useless. You're both perfect for each other. Anyway, they start noticing that this liquid oozy stuff that I guess embodies evil, it was leaking out of Graydon and leaking out of Valentine, starts bubbling up. The wand also starts glowing. They figured that Elora is the one causing it, and she just makes it worse. No, 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 no! So now they know she sneezes and makes things happen or not. Very confusing, because that just seemed to have come out of nowhere. It's their friends. They've come to liberate them. While the trolls go to see what's going on, knowing Alora Dan is probably with them, Willow Watermelon Head and not Mad Mardigan have a conversation. Obviously, this guy's not Mad Mardigan. I almost thought for a split second they were going to recast him, and that would have made things interesting, but it wouldn't have explained why he didn't recognize his daughter. We find out that Slater is actually Allagash, Mad Mardigan's friend, brother, friend, whoever, yet another person that is responsible for possibly betraying Mad Mardigan. Willow, at this point, feels as though he is an 
afterthought in his own show. Turns out they were all searching for the Chimerian cuirass, that stupid item that they keep bringing up that we don't know what it's symbolic for. And the person who murdered and betrayed him, Mad Mardigan, was apparently Borman. Anyway, they're able to get free. Watermelon Head saves her father's old friend. And the Dungeon Crawler adventure continues. Every minute they have to stop Elora from sneezing. Graydon is taken with one of them while he's also using the staff. Elora has to save Jade. And as a result, she ends up dropping the wand. There's more talk about her father. Father. It's just kind of boring, the talking. Honestly, it's not that important. You just have to know that Mad Mardigan wanted to track down the stupid cure-ass item. This guy says he's my brother and I love him, so he called himself Mad Mardigan to let Mad Mardigan get away and chase whatever he was chasing. While Jade and Elora are with Borman, Borman says that there's something he could do to fix the mistake that he made. To get everyone, Willow and Kit, out alive. And that's if he's wearing the cuirass. I think there must be something wrong with me, Linus. So now for someone who could never use magic or completely forgot how to use magic, all of a sudden now she's like, oh my god, the harder I try to control it, the more I just lose control. Now she can use magic and now she can't control it even though she previously didn't have it or it was buried really deeply before. Anyway, what to move things along, don't you know? They're all like, oh my god, Borman's lying. We should've known. That's when Alagash and Borman see each other and they're like, oh my god, bro, I've missed you. Hi, you idiot, you freaking traitor. And then they start fighting because it's funny. Elora tells Willow that, yep, she dropped it. She dropped the wand. Can't blame Willow for being mad, but maybe you should've taught her wand defensive classes and how not to lose the wand instead of taking it away from her every opportunity you got. Maybe for something so monumentally important to your survival and for defense, you probably should have had her make or you should have made something to put the wand in while you're not using it. Because realistically, who sits there and decides that they're going to carry their wand everywhere they go in their freaking hand? <laughs> <laughs> How was she able to stop? Okay, stop. Unless she has freaking Hulk powers, how was she able to stop that? Unless he stopped himself. That made no sense. And yes, I'm aware it's a fantasy show, but still. So Watermelon Head accuses him of stealing the Lux Arcana. What the frick that is, I don't know. Honestly, I do not care. Allagash and Borman are just basically pointing the finger at each other about betraying each other and stealing from each other and Mad Mardigan and whatnot. Meanwhile, the trolls are on their way. Allagash finds a secret passageway. It's a passageway where they have to find out the answer to some riddles. Through the ages, unremembered, I have tested those who entered. If they don't get the answers right, they die in the tomb. This is the part that annoys me. I told you that in this episode and from every other episode before this, it seems as though Willow is non-existent. The show is called Willow Nespa, but yes, Willow is no longer the focal central point of the show. He's not even like one of the supporting characters. He's like behind the supporting characters in his own show. So they have the riddle and the riddle is, I pass from sire to heir and each brother takes his share. It could be a curse or whatever and others use it more than you. Willow is given the opportunity to shine here. He says he's good at riddles. And this literally happens, and I don't know why, but it just pisses me off. Anybody? It's a riddle. I'm good at these. Great. You got the answer? A name. What? Didn't even give him time. I mean, I know life and death you know, it's not the essence, but in the show called Willow, where he just says he's good at riddles, they don't even let him have it. Oh my God, Jesus Christ. It, they, they've made him so deplorable in the show. Not only did they make him a class A freaking asshole, but they also make him literally useless in his own show. Turns out to be right. And the only way we know that the show's about Willow is that the camera keeps cutting back to him every now and then and showing him standing alongside the other characters. So we don't forget him. See guys, we included the dwarf in his own show so he can feel special. Seriously, how insulting. Maybe Warwick really needed some work or something because I don't believe that he would actually take this knowing that they would have done this with his character. Like it literally doesn't help him. It takes some time solving the other riddle, but when it finally gets open, both these guys are fighting over themselves for the cuirass. Kit goes in and finds her father's sword. She hears her father's voice calling out to her. He didn't take his sword. 
So Watermelon Head is very, very upset because she sees her father in there, and the only reason I find this relatable is because I love my dad. I would have felt something a little bit more for her had they set her character up to be likable. But because they made her such a monumental dipshit, it's very hard to feel for her outside of anything than relatability that I have a father as well. So Jay and Elora grab Kit. If you really wanted to go in and save your father, you would have done it already. And the tomb closes. I hate the way they tease that we're gonna see Mad Monica throughout this entire show and this episode when we know we're never going to see him. The trolls all show up. Willow has the opportunity to use his freaking staff and he doesn't do it. Where's the flamethrower? Willow, where's the flamethrower that you literally pulled out your ass a few episodes ago? Oh, that's non-existent now. How convenient. I think it would have been very useful in this situation, but oh no. Allagash risks his life and he saves everyone. They all fight the trolls and apparently the cure ass didn't work for Allagash. He got stabbed anyway. Allagash closes the gate and then he says something really stupid that makes no sense to me. Maybe I'm just coming down off the awful flu I just experienced, but it just went completely over my head and it just seems very contrived. Well, tell me what? He went off to fight whatever's down there because he believed one of you would protect what matters most up here. What matters most? <laughs> Elora Dannon. <laughs> Call me crazy, but it's starting to not really feel like that. Substances run a bit right, don't you think? The magical mystery and mysticism that was in the first iteration of Willow, i.e. the movie, really made you feel like the baby was special. Now, not so much. But that's just me. So anyway, as a Quickly as he's made in disappearance, he dies. And they walk across this lava field that has water under it. So I don't know if it's lava or not, because why does it have water? Willow is freaking useless once more. Kit rolls out like the turd she is. She's mad and they're in a dangerous place and everything is falling down. And she uses this time to talk to Alora about how sad she is that her father kept choosing Alora over her. And she stands up in the middle of the way. Like, I get that you're upset and you wanted to save your father or whatnot, but this is not the time. It's not like you can go back now. You're literally putting everybody else's life in danger and I'm I guess you're supposed to feel sorry for her here but it just makes me freaking annoyed. And Laura claims she was trying to help and Watermelon Head says of course you were. To find Eric, to find Graydon, to rescue us all. I could have brought him back and you stopped me. No bitch she didn't. Nobody was you were standing there for quite a while. Nobody was stopping you from going down there. You waited for everybody to come and pull you away before you started struggling to get there. You had all the time in the world to go down there. So don't give me that. You guys stop me from being able to save my father. You goddamn right. If I heard my father's voice down there, even if it was stupid, I would not have hesitated. I would have gone down to save my father. Come what may, I would have broken all my freaking legs, but I would have gone after him. I would have sat there just looking into the freaking light. So you had no intention on saving him. Freaking rich coming from you. So she's there talking about daddy issues while the cave is falling down around them. And can you guess what happens? But now I can't. Please. Uh, hello. For what? What, you'll kill me? Blame me, you hate me. Just please, can you just do it somewhere else? Because if we stay here, we're both... Holy get what you fucking deserve! They have a standstill with this character where she's trying to show emotion. <laughs> it's like the show decides to hurl one at her and for some reason it's wholly fulfilling and comical. I don't know why. So they're like, oh my god, kid, oh no, everyone's sad because, you know, she's drowning now. Willow's just standing there and then he tries to do his, his magic spell and it doesn't work and they're asking Willow to help and what Willow is doing isn't working because even though the show was called Willow, it's not Willow's time to shine, you guys. Who cares about him, you know? I mean, Elora finds the wand just neatly there. Everyone just happened to step over it, even though it's a very dark object on a light background. She slowly picks it up dramatically as though someone's life is not in danger. And then she starts trying to say the stupid words over and over again that Willow was just saying. And then she's, she's doing something and nothing is being done. And then, you know, we're supposed to have this, this big crescendo climactic ending and... We see Kit drowning and then nothing happens. 
I hate this show. Then we cut to El. Ugh, looking rough. He gets to the other side and he drinks out of this freaking pool of Charizard scum. Then he hears a voice, a girl. She's in a prison. He thinks that whoever put her in here, put him in there as well. She asks if he's gonna release her. They stare lovingly into each other's eyes. And then it ends. Oh, so much. Seriously, coming off of not feeling well. Bad taste in the mouth, this one is. Is it as bad as the last episode was? Good grief, no. Thank goodness, because actually things were happening, you know, but that's not really saying much considering the very low bar the show was set. But the only thing I can describe this episode is frustrating and useless. I don't know why the show's called Willow. I keep forgetting. I don't really care what happens to Kit. I don't care if she lives or dies. The show would have been better without her, to be honest. So this is supposed to be some kind of big reveal in saving her life. I don't care. I really don't care. Actually, it would be better for the show if Kit died. Just the solemnness of it, and Laura realizing that she failed someone because she took her sweet time getting the wand. Anyway, thanks so much for watching. This has been Ulturi. You ask, we answer.